When you're coding, Google is your best friend. And there's a few reasons for that. Number one reason is Google has most of the answers. And the reason is because most developers are normally really straightforward. They, we love open information. We love sharing different stuff with people. So we have a lot of great resources that we can utilize to learn more about coding. In particular, W3, which I talk about a lot in class, helps us find something like if we just type in W3 um, and we see a brand new tag, maybe we see the sub tag, and we just write W3 sub tag. In other words, we're just asking Google, hey, what is that? pops up right at the top, we open it up. It gives us a live example, gives us all this information. More than that, Google gives us a whole bunch of other references, not just W3. It's also great for finding answers for problems that some developers have already solved, and you can just quickly jump in there and find the answer, because a lot of people are nice and they post it up there. The other reason Google is our best friend when we're coding is because of the developer tools. So when you right click, you can right click anywhere on the page and you can just do inspect element. If I right click right here, we'll just choose this one. And down at the bottom, we have these tabs. Now, all I'm concerned with right now is elements. So on the left side, you can see all of our HTML. And on the right side, we have a list of our CSS rules that are attached to that. All right, so we have our H1 tag, which we changed to the color of red. And that displays here. Now, I can mess around with this. For example, I can change hello world to just hello and I enter and that shows us exactly what it would look like. We're not hacking, we're not changing anything. When we refresh the page, it comes right back. But we can go in and see, hey, what would it look like if we changed the text here? What would it look like if I right clicked on this and I just deleted it? Well, that's what it would look like. You can also check out the CSS, which is pretty critical. So we can see, okay, let's uncheck red. Maybe we'll keep red and we'll change the color to green. Maybe we'll go in and we'll change the font size to 5px. It makes it really, really small and really hard to see. Let me make that uh, 50px. There we go. You can keep making changes in here all that you want. Now, this change actually is connected directly to our CSS style sheet. So it's saying, hey, what would it look like if we made the change in main.css? You could also see what it would look like in inline styling if you did it in the element.style section. That's just a good way to say, hey, if you know, I want to have a really important rule and I want to make sure that it is attached, what would that look like? Scroll down a little bit, you can also see user agent style sheet. All browsers come with their own styles already pre-attached uh, pre to your files. So it'll show you what styles it's putting onto the H1 tag. It has display, it has margin and font weight. And at the very bottom, it also lists out the box model. So it has the width and the height right in the middle, has padding, top right, bottom left, border, top right, bottom left, and margin, same thing. You can click in here and see what it would look like if we added margin. Let's say we added margin of 100 px to the left side, and it pushes it over 100 px, and you can see it right there on the screen. So you can actually see the margin right there, and you can do the same exact thing with padding. You can actually see this on the screen, so it tells us all of these styles that are going on. So when you have a really big HTML page with a lot of CSS, it's really easy to go through and see what is affecting, which CSS rules are affecting what elements. So definitely utilize Google as much as you possibly can. It's your best friend.